This is going to be a look at how Ronnie Stanley played in his 2022 debut, the Ravens' 1917 win over the Bengals. Of course, we know Ronnie really played the majority of the first three possessions. Well, two out of the first three possessions. I offer to you that it's not surprising to me that we scored 10 points on the first and third possession combined when Ronnie Stanley was in there at left tackle. If you've listened to this channel much at all, you know I'm, I'm a big fan of Patrick McCarry. I'm glad that we have the guy. But to me, and I thought about putting some McCarry film in here so you could see a direct comparison, but I, want, I didn't want it to come off as derogatory. To me, the difference can be seen in how Trey Hendrickson attacks them. And he tried three different moves on Ronnie Stanley on pass rushes, and neither one of them worked. And after the third one, I thought there was a look on Hendrickson's face like, oh, wow, this is something different. And that's why I labeled this the name of this video Tectonic Shift, because I feel like from a foundational standpoint for the Ravens, if Ronnie Stanley's healthy, we have a legit left tackle again. And, and that is going to, I think, shift the dynamic of this offense, of this team, you know, in the direction that we want it to go as Ravens fans. So we got 17 plays, all from the first two drives. I think I got 17 snaps, like I said, and he only played 22. So if you're not sure, Ronnie plays, you know, left tackle, and he is going to be going up against Trey Hendrickson some. He goes up against Joseph Asai some. This first play is an RPO. Uh, to the offense's right, our left on the screen. And I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not trying to be derogatory towards anyone who played last year. But this block here is one that we did not execute. Now you may say, well, it's just a down block. Well, it's a little bit different than that. This is a three technique here. Over on the other side, outside shade of, of Zeitler. Sometimes you go inside eye to outside eye, so he'd be lined up tighter. Sometimes you go inside shoulder to outside shoulder. You know, whatever your alignment is. Over here, this is a four eye. This is a different alignment. This is a four eye that will often engage you. So getting that getting that down block, getting that movement down is a little bit tougher to do. Last year we did not successfully do this. Roddy Stanley takes him down quickly and easily. If we did give the football, you can see there's a pretty big running lane here. Morgan Moses, who played very well. On the pull as the tackle, Zeitler kicking out Hendrickson. Stanley and Ricard with seal blocks. We are in business if we give it. Not sure why we didn't. Because Hendrickson, I mean, excuse me, Hubbard is like upfield. <clears throat> Unless this is just a called throw. To me, this looks like it should have been a give. Should have been JK off the left side. And we hurt them off the left side. So that was first down, seven yards. Second and three. Going to be a counter wind back play to JK for four. Look at the combo by Ronnie. After after I watched this maybe an hour ago, and after the first two plays, I thought, he's our best lineman. I mean, he's our most athletic guy in terms of doing this. Combo, the D-tackle, up to the backside inside linebacker, which is Pratt. At, at the speed, the quickness, the explosiveness is all there. I mean, he only played 22 snaps. The more Ronnie Stanley plays, the better this offense will be. I'm convinced, just seeing two possessions, the first possession and the third possession, which I'm going to show you every one of those plays. All right, this snap hits DuVernay. I'm giving you every play. Snap hits DuVernay. So there's not really much to say about Ronnie, other than the fact that he's quick out here and he's balanced. His steps are not real big. And I, I like that he gets the first punch on Hendrickson sometimes. Other guys don't do that with guys like Hendrickson, those high-motor guys. I like it. All right, so that was our third play of the game. DuVernay somehow got 12 yards. Then we go play action to Duve. So we go play action. Ronnie's going down on the D-tackle to help out the left guard powers. Kind of inconsequential for him, to be honest with you. Duve out there for a nine-yard gain. All right, fourth play, fifth play, excuse me. Dobbins for six off the left side. Again, combos trying to work up to the backside inside linebacker, which in this case was Logan Wilson. And you can see that we've got a pull by Linderbaum. This is nice. Linderbaum is going to pull and log. So he's not kicking out. He goes up to the inside linebacker level. Ricard gets to kick out on Hendrickson. And then again, Moses getting through the hole, six yards. This is a beautiful play, guys. 
Like this is this is not easy to execute against a high level uh, defensive front like the Bengals. Even though it's it's six guys in the box, I think our guys are doing a great job at least on these plays, especially Linderbaum. Stanley trying to work up to fifty five. Linderbaum goes and gets fifty five as well. Watch watch him contact collision fifty seven, and then he sees. 55 start to cross his face and knows he could impact the play, he goes and gets him too. With Linderbaum, Zeitler, Moses, Ronnie Stanley, even, even Ben Powers, who I thought played quite well. We got a really good offensive line. Toss to Duve. Love the play. Not sure about you. Stays in balance for a while. We're talking about Ronnie, so it's a pin pull. So we're pinning with Andrews, and then we're pulling outside with Stanley. He's usually trying to go get somebody. There's nobody that shows up. So since nobody shows up, he just says, I'll go ahead and seal Hendrickson. Hendrickson wasn't talking as much shit last night. I like Hendrickson. You know, if you're a Bengals fan, you listen to this. I like him. I'd love to have him on my team. You know, but he talks a lot of stuff. And so you can understand from an opposing team's perspective, you're glad when you got a guy in there who can match him athletically and strength wise in terms of explosiveness and kind of shut some of that trash talk down. All right, that last play was inconsequential as far as uh, Ronnie Stanley goes. This one should be an incomplete pass to Proche short on a second down. Look how quick Ronnie gets out of there. That's Joseph Asai, 58, who missed all of last year. A athletic and explosive guy. I think he should get more reps. Not that I don't like Hendrickson and Hubbard, but I think Asai has some ability. But they switch it, and Ronnie just is smooth. Look how square he stays. And I don't mean square to the line of scrimmage, but the shoulders aren't turning at all. He helps. Guys, he actually helps out on the inside with his right arm. Elite. I mean, he's our best lineman already. And I like Tyler Linderbaum a lot. Like, a lot, a lot. But I think he's our best lineman already. Third and ten. This one should be complete to likely on the drag. He's got Hendrickson. Anchors down. Hendrickson's nasty. That left hand, you know, is on the shoulder pad. Ends up look almost looking like it's on the neck. I love how Hendrickson plays. So Ronnie gives it right back to him. You can see. This is a different guy to deal with. This is not 2021. Uh, we are going to be a heck of an offensive line if the more Ronnie Stanley plays. All right, third possession. Or second possession, excuse me, was uh, Macari's possession. We got a field goal here on the first one. And so we're going to skip forward in terms of Ronnie Stanley film to the third possession. We're up three to nothing as we take possession of the ball at midfield. This is going to be complete to Duve off the left side. Again, Asai trying to stem inside. And Ronnie just takes him down and then stays with him. That's the thing that I always notice about the really, really good offensive linemen is it's their second engagement, or defensive linemen too, their second engagement. They will win on. And I love I love what we got here. We got a good matchup. Von Bell is a hell of a football player against Ricard. I think this is a sigh. If it's if I'm wrong and it's not a sigh, then I feel stupid. Uh, but whoever it is, 58's got a nice motor. Great job getting the ball to Duve early in the game, attacking them with Duve, showing them, hey, this guy can make plays. All right, first and 10 should be a boot to Robinson. He's just stepping out to 58, like he's going to try to jump him for a run play. It's play action. Robinson, easy eight yards. Same play concept. We got Robinson the ball on against the Jets for like an eight or ten yard gain as well. Second and two. Dobbins going to be a short loss on the play. We got 92 in BJ Hill. Looks like the media should be a keep if we're reading it. 96 is stemming down the line. I think JK's got to try to dodge him, juke him. If we're reading that, that should be a give. But I understand Lamar may have some awareness that 21 is blitzing off the edge as well. So give the Bengals credit. They're picking up on the fact that Lamar is opening to this side in the last two or three weeks, and then we're running the wind back gap scheme over to the other side. So what they do is they run 96 down to tackle the running back, and then they bring the DB off the edge for Lamar. So maybe that's what Lamar sees. But if this is what we're reading, this is a misread, this should be a keep. J.K. understands that and cuts it back against the green, makes a miss, but, you know, it's a, it's a loss, short loss. Second and two. 
All right, third and two here. Fast sweep to Duve. I call it fast sweep whenever the quarterback hands it off in front. But, you know, we could be reading the end man on the line of scrimmage, but it looks like we're blocking him. So I'm talking about Pratt and then Ricard and Stanley is just combo and Hendrickson. When Stanley was in, plays to that side, Hendrickson or the D tackle played no role in it. So I don't, you know, watch him, watch him after Ricard bumps Hendrickson. Stanley just takes him over. Once he takes somebody over, that's it. That guy's out of the play. That's it's three times that I've seen it in this game. All right, this should be a first and ten now. Davis right side for three, so it's going to be away. He kind of jumps Hendrickson because he understands it's a stretch concept to the other side. Now, it's just kind of like a pin, really, by Andrews, pinning that defender down. We're not really pin-pulling anyone, but it's an inside linebacker who's blitzing C-gap, so he takes him down, kind of mucks the whole thing up. Isn't really much to say about Ronnie on the backside. You know, we for whatever reason we do this on our stretch play, we block the backside D end instead of trying to, you know, work everybody up this way, kind of create that natural, you know, maybe a cutback lean. But the Ravens don't do that. We lock call it. That's what we would say, lock call it with the backside tackle. He locks up on the backside D end. That was a gain of three on first and ten. Got two more plays here in this video. You let me know what you think. A uh, second and seven. This is the only one that I think you could say this is a pressure. I know that everybody's saying, oh, it was 13 pass plays. Ronnie was on for no pressures. Uh, you know, I kind of feel like this should be a pressure, but I understand that if Lamar doesn't, you know, break out to the right, and it makes sense that he breaks out to the right, because as Drake goes out here, I think it's Drake, or was that Duve? As Drake goes out here, the linebacker goes with him, so Lamar understands, like, there is actually some space out here for him to take advantage of. So he tries to take off that way. Well, it's a stunt. They're bringing the safety off the edge. And Hendrickson was slamming B. So naturally, that's going to take him right to that side. If Lamar, for whatever reason, had chosen to put his foot in the ground and reverse field, go back this way, Ronnie's just going to take Hendrickson down. He's just going to take him that way and push him out of the play. He has no way of knowing that Lamar is scrambling to the right or going to scramble to the right. You know, maybe could that be counted as a pressure? I don't know. I don't know how they grade it, but I, I've seen the stat today. All day today, you know, 13 pass plays and no pressures. Third and seven, this is the touchdown to Andrews. You got Ricard over here on the left with Ronnie. Nothing. You know, I kind of like it. Us putting Ricard in as the only – just so you know, on this play, Ricard's the only running back on the field. So we're telling you it's a pass play, right? But we're kind of guaranteeing you some good pass pro in that we've got six guys protecting initially, and then Ricard's usually going to, you know, release out in the flats or release over the middle or release out in the flats to the side he lined up on. In terms of Ronnie, you know, the only time I saw him take big steps was on this one. You see his feet ended up getting crossed up. Not that he did anything wrong. He just understands what Hendrickson's trying to do. Hendrickson is trying to be violent and rip up with his inside arm, his right arm, kind of carry Stanley with him. But Stanley's core allows him to stay in front of him still, even though, you know, he's got his feet end up crossing over and then that look at that big step with his right foot. That's not a technique thing. That's just middle of the play. Hendrickson is a powerful athlete and that rip has an impact, you know, even when you're a big man like Stanley. I think he's our best lineman. I mean, I really do. Just based on the limited sample size we've seen here, I think Tyler Linderbaum is our most talented guy right now in terms of speed and athleticism. We have a tackle who looks similarly athletic. I didn't see him pull in this game. We generally are pulling, you know, our right guard and or right tackle on a lot of co play, uh, run concepts in recent weeks. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, I might, you know, maybe I'm overstating how he looked on film, but potentially, and the way he combos people, those combo blocks, we didn't do them. We may have executed a combo block 40% of the time last year, either tackle. Either, either right, the right tackle or left tackle, no matter who was in. Ronnie Stanley executed it the first three times they asked him to. You know, him dealing with Hendrickson on pass pro looked smooth and easy. Looks like nothing bothers him. I mean, I hate to say it because it's only one game and he only played 22 snaps, but talent level wise, him versus Hendrickson is a complete shift in our favor. Hendrickson will win some reps against him. Hendrickson's a baller. He's had 14-plus sacks the last two years, I believe. Hendrickson will make some plays, 
but he didn't last night against Ronnie Stanley in the past. And then later on in the game, as Macari took over, I th- and first of all, credit our coaches. Like we had Stanley and Dobbins on essentially a pitch count, and we stayed with it. We didn't betray that. And I thought you could see the the evidence of Stanley not being on the field in the second half. It felt like there was more pressure in the second half. These two drives I just showed you, there was none, at least from at least from our left side, right? Except for that one play when Lamar, you know, scrambles out of the pocket to the right and Hendrickson slams B gap. So let me know what you think of my breakdown. Let me know what you think of Ronnie Stanley's play. Am I overstating the potential impact that this could have on our offense? If we get a left tackle who can successfully down block a four eye, combo a three up to the backside inside linebacker, allow Lamar and Ricard and Zeitler and whoever else is pulling to do their jobs. If he can reach block people on the toss stuff or the pin pull toss, I guess I should say. If he, we can use him to pull on the away from him, run plays to our right, and he looks like he it looks like he gives us a whole lot more options than and then than the guys we've had at left tackle the last two years. You know, clearly way way better than the guy we had at left tackle last year. So appreciate you guys checking the video out. Very fun to watch some film of Ronnie Stanley. I'm obviously very excited. You can tell by the sound of my voice and I'm being kind of hyperbolic, I guess. But uh, I think the sky's the limit if this guy's healthy for our offensive line. He really to me causes a major shift in how teams try to attack us in past situations. Because Ronnie Stanley, quite simple, simply can win one-on-one matchups against pretty much everyone he's going to go against. You guys let me know what you think of my thoughts in the comments section.